cantina scene from A New Hope is truly one of the greatest scenes in Star Wars history, and I say that with 100% sincerity because there's just so much amazing stuff going on. There's so many costumes, there's so many interesting alien types, aliens which would be a huge part of the Star Wars series moving forward. There are little stories and character interactions that you can pick up, and of course, most of all, the music is amazing. One of my favorite Star Wars Legends book, and actually the only Legends book I currently keep in hard copy in my apartment, is Star Wars Tales from the Moss Eisley Cantina. This book basically goes through many of the characters within the cantina, gives them a really interesting backstory. And I think one of my favorite backstories, and actually the very first one in the book, is the story of the band who plays in the cantina. And I've always loved these guys. So they're called Bith, that's their race. And when I was a kid, I would always say that Star Wars Revenge of the Bith would be a more interesting movie than Revenge of the Sith. And although Revenge of the Sith was great, I still, I still need a Bith-based movie in my life. But until then, this story is really the best we get. And it's called We Don't Do Weddings, The Band's Tale, which I just think is such a great name. In it, we learn that the band, which is called Figure and Dawn and the Model Nodes, basically at one point had a full-time gig at Jabba's Palace. And I mean, the story itself, while we're learning, this is just so much fun. I think the second page, there's a masturbation joke. We learn about how the band has gambling problems and how the main member does drugs as well. And how although their music is really, really high quality, they never actually made it to the big show. But, like I was saying, the band basically starts off at Jabba's Palace, and even more fun than that, they start off in the middle of one of Jabba's famous all-nighters. I mean, we see that in Return of the Jedi, just everyone's asleep after a long night of partying, and that's really where things kick off here. And the book describes various uh, alien bodies on the floor after a long night of partying. Anyway... The band's offered a gig by one of Jabba's rivals, who's named Valerian and is a Whippid, which you'll definitely recognize the species, although it's not a popular name within the Star Wars universe, and the species actually hasn't appeared that many times. But they're offered this gig to perform at a wedding. And although they have an exclusive contract with Jabba, the pay for this event is really high, so Figur and Don, the leader of the band, who's quite hot-headed, accepts the contract and they go to play at the wedding. And I mean, to be honest, this wedding seems pretty fun. There's free-flowing liquor, there's sabac tables everywhere. If the band's not playing, they're basically allowed to do whatever they want. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting species here. And as we'll get to later, there's some familiar faces as well. The band isn't really able to enjoy the wedding, though, because the whole time they're worried about Jabba sending someone after them because it basically comes out that he's discovered that they've breached their exclusivity contract and are playing there and he's not happy. Again, they're playing for basically Jabba's rival and she does the same thing Jabba does, you know, she smuggles, she sells drugs, all that sort of stuff. She's basically another crime lord, so that makes the situation even worse. But nonetheless, they keep playing and um, they actually deal with some of the same things they deal with in A New Hope, you know, there's a few little, there's some violence, there's some thugs, and you know, they take it at stride like they do in A New Hope. But uh, eventually a fight breaks out, and at first, the band is worried that, oh, so Jabba's thugs have came for us and they're coming to get us, but really it turns out that Jabba's just kind of sent some guys in to start a riot. And at the same time, some stormtroopers show up, and the casino that the wedding is in had been operating illegally, so, of course, you know, they start shooting people. Right before the fight actually broke out, one of the band members was approached by a bartender who really complimented them on their music and said that he was surprised that they were basically playing in such a slummy place like Tatooine. This bartender is described as being extremely ugly and makes an offhand remark, a derogatory remark about droids, so you can kind of guess where this is leading. Anyway, once the fight breaks out, obviously, although they haven't been paid, the band wants no part of this. They don't want to be shot. They don't want to be otherwise beaten up. So along with the bartender, they leave. But they basically got no money because they were relying on the income from the wedding and the last bit of money was actually gambled away by the band's leader. But the bartender basically, knowing how good they actually are, puts in a good word with the owner of the bar where he works. And that's Chalum and he's a Wookiee and he owns Chalum's Spaceport Cantina otherwise known as the Cantina from a New Hope. And that's basically where they end up. And while there, and basically throughout the 
book, they've kind of heard a bit of Han Solo, and the story actually ends with Greedo on the lookout for Han, trying to collect his bounty. So basically, it ends minutes before A New Hope starts. Now, obviously, this isn't the most impactful story in the Star Wars universe, but it's a whole lot of fun. Like, the band is characterized in a really funny way. Like, they talk about how humans don't recognize them, and they're often approached thinking that, oh, you know, I'm this Bith when they're actually this other one. Like, the Bith who tells the story is mistaken at one point for the leader of the band. And we also learn that they pretty much value their instruments over all, all else. Like, they'd rather get shot than have their instrument get shot. And that they're really quite good at music. Like, the jizz, and that's the kind of music they play, it basically comes automatically, and they actually communicate through the music too, it seems. Like, they have warnings that they can play in the music when shit's about to go down and when they gotta get out of somewhere quickly. I mean, I probably would have personally kept working at Jabba's, and although we learn in this book that he's always been throwing people in the Rancor pit, and that uh, he's always been putting people in the Sarlacc, still, I wouldn't want him after me, and uh, I don't know, this is just a fun real little book that talks about a band moving between some uh, major Moss Eisley establishments and some major Tatooine establishments, I guess. I really like this book, though, and it's it's one of my favorites. It, it's the, again, like I said, it's the only one I brought with me to my current apartment, a, har a hard copy at least. And uh, I just like how it provides, you know, an interesting and believable, b believable backstory for all of the interesting creatures that you see in that five minute span of the cantina. So if there's any others that you'd like me to talk about, post down in the comments section. This isn't my minor characters of Star Wars video. That will go in more in depth. Maybe I'll feature the band sometime in that. But for now, I just wanted to let you guys know how awesome this uh this book is give you guys a little taste of what it's like and uh just check it out legends game is a lot of fun anyways guys this has been Eckhart's ladder may the force be with you